What's up my dudes, it's Demi and today I'm gonna be taking you around all of Walt Disney World because we're gonna ride every attraction that has a zero height requirement. That means even your babies can ride these rides. There's a total of 24 rides with zero height requirements. These are moving vehicle rides so we're not talking like shows like the Tiki Room or uh, the Animal Trails in Animal Kingdom or like the Swiss Family Treehouse. Um, or the trains. We're talking actual moving ride vehicle rides. There are 24 throughout all of Walt Disney World, and I'm gonna show you all of them. And it, I think some are actually gonna really surprise you. So let's get into it. Let's go get into some hijinks. We are gonna start off at the Magic Kingdom in Fantasyland, probably the most popular um, land for our young kids. And we're gonna start at It's a Small World, a classic opening day attraction here at the Magic Kingdom. It's a small world, it's such a classic Disney ride, just screams Disney when you hear it. Um, it's a slow moving boat ride and it goes through scenes of children from all over the world singing It's a Small World After All on repeat so it gets stuck in your head forever, but it's a beautiful uh, little attraction with a lovely message and it's a nice little relaxing boat ride. This is definitely a must do, a must do, if you have never ridden this ride before, this is an opening day attraction. I'm gonna link uh, right here. I, I did one day all of the opening day attractions here at the Magic Kingdom. And you know, this is something that I feel like everybody coming to Disney should do at least once. Classic opening day fantasy land attraction, Peter Pan's Flight is a no height requirement ride. At Peter Pan's Flight, you fly over London to Neverland and see scenes from Peter Pan the movie. You get to see the mermaids and the pirates. And I think it's like a beautiful, relaxing, slow moving ride. And it feels so magical when you fly over London and you fly over all the scenes. And this is an opening day attraction and it's just an absolutely great, great ride. Fantasyland, right behind the castle, is the Prince Charming Regal Carousel. And yes, it is just a carousel, but it's a carousel in Fantasyland playing Disney music, and it's a lovely family attraction. And if you're going to go on a carousel, why not do it at Disney World? Right across Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which has a height requirement, is the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, which does not. This is a family attraction. This, many years ago at this point, replaced the uh, very scary uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, which you can still ride over in Disneyland, but over here, it is now Mr. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is our next no height requirement attraction, the Teacups, aka Mad Tea Party. And what's great about Mad Tea Party is you can control the speed and the spins as fast or as slow as you want. And I've seen people, people spin so fast on this thing where it's like, I don't understand how they're functioning afterwards. But then if you're like me, if you're old, and get sick like headaches very easily on any type of ride vehicle even though you love it so much then you barely spin or don't spin at all and it's still a great attraction so let's do it all right we're good this is hard to spin with one hand <laughs> 
You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a ticker, baby, right round, round, round. Comes in hot, comes in hot, just beware, it comes in hot. <laughs> but so fun, always. Our next no height requirement ride is Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid. It is a dark ride attraction that goes through the story of the Little Mermaid. It's so cool. There's an amazing Ursula animatronic, and it's just like a nice Omnimover dark ride. Making my way into Storybook Circus for our next ride. There are two rides in Storybook Circus. One is the Barnstormer, which actually does have a height requirement. It's like the first coaster you or a kid will ever go on at Disney World. Um, but Dumbo, the flying elephant, does not have a height requirement. Now, if you can see, there is actually two Dumbos. So when they did the uh, refurbishment back in 2012 there was used to just be one Dumbo and it used to be near the carousel but they moved it over here made two mix the line go really fast what's great about Dumbo is because they have the two you shouldn't really see a wait longer than 20 to 25 minutes depending on you know crowds plus there is an interactive queue so the queue goes into this beautiful big circus tent so while you're waiting online your kid can come in here or you can just come in here and have them play on a jungle gym um, and all this stuff over there this is such a great place to kit for kids to come and work off some energy and then when you're ready you can go ride with Dumbo made it to Tomorrowland for our next attraction. It is the Tomorrowland Transit People Mover. This is such a cult favorite. This ride has been um, down for many, many months. I might have been over, yeah, it was actually over a year this ride was down and it is finally back up and running and it's it, it has such an amazing fan base and it's just this really nice relaxing tour around Tomorrowland and then it takes you through um, this really cool model of Epcot and it's just like an underrated ride that only like I feel like I feel like it's gotten way more popular the last few years but this is one of the most underrated rides at Disney and it's it's just something I feel like at least if you've never done it give it a try and see what everyone's talking about so let's go do the people mover I forgot to mention, you also go inside of Space Mountain, which is behind you right now. I'm telling you, this is such an underrated attraction. Our next attraction is in Tomorrowland. It is Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. I love this attraction. It is a game and a ride. It's an Omni Mover attraction and it, it's a family attraction. Everyone can go on it and it's so fun. You are blasting your lasers and you're gonna try to, to defeat General Zerg while also trying to get a high score and become a galactic hero. I am terrible at this ride. There are tips out there of trying to get um, the highest score. So definitely go look those up if you really want to become a galactic hero. I know them and I still don't do well. <laughs> Believe it or not, our next no height requirement ride is Astro Orbiter. That's the ride that's above the launching pad. You take an elevator to get up there and it's basically Dumbo, but like super high up. And honestly, like it really pushes you out because of the gravity up there. And it's super cool. Like you get amazing views of the park um, and you know, it's, it's cool to be that high. Um, however, <laughs> I will say personally, I get scared on this attraction and I do crazy coasters. Like I do crazy coasters at Six Flags, but yet for some reason, this ride 
I panicked on. I was like, no, no, no. And I've only ridden it one time, and that is it. Unless I'm really forced to go on this ride, I don't go do it. Which is so funny, because again, I will risk my life at Six Flags crazy roller coasters, but Astro Orbiter, that has a no height requirement where babies can go on, I have a problem. But I'm sure your kids will love it. I'm sure your babies will not remember it, but you get to take them on there and it's gonna be great. Our next no height requirement ride is in Adventureland and is the Magic Carpets of Aladdin. Don't be careful because the camel will spit at you. And it's basically Dumbo, but on carpets, I would just go and do Dumbo. It takes a lot quicker. It's more classic. Um, you can wait indoors on the line in Dumbo. Here you're outside in the heat. It is brutal. This is probably one of my least favorite attractions in Disney World. Uh, but it is here for you and it's here for the entire family. A classic Disney ride and one of my favorites, Pirates of the Caribbean, is a no height requirement ride. This is so great. I love that this is a no height requirement ride. However, this could be a little scary for your young ones, as you will see. So make sure, you know, judgment call this one for sure. But it's definitely a classic. Pirates of the Caribbean is a slow moving boat ride. You're gonna see scenes of different pirates. You're gonna see Captain Jack Sparrow and my personal favorite, Captain Barbosa. Let's do it. Love it, such a classic. I do want to mention, I forgot to say before, there is a small little drop on the ride. So if you're holding your child on your lap, make sure you just hold hold them a little tighter than you know usual for that little drop. But otherwise, great ride. Let me know in the comments if this is something you would take your kids on or not. I think that would help um, other families too traveling. And I, I think that's a really good uh, insight to hear from other people. Our next attraction is the world famous Jungle Cruise. The Jungle Cruise is a true classic here at the Magic Kingdom. You're going to head on a boat ride and your skipper is going to show you around the jungle. And while they're showing you around the jungle, they're going to be telling you a lot of really funny jokes. Or maybe you don't think they're funny, but a lot of people do, because they're dad jokes. Our next attraction is the Liberty Square Riverboat. It's a really nice relaxing attraction and you get really beautiful views especially of Big Thunder Mountain and you can get some really awesome photos. It's kind of like a filler attraction but I think families really really love this one because it's a great midday break attraction where you can kind of like take a break but still be on a ride. Plus again those views you really just can't beat them. Welcome foolish mortals to the Haunted Mansion. Yes, the Haunted Mansion is actually a no height requirement line. Thank you. Uh, and I love riding it at night. It is extra spooky. The Haunted Mansion is one of my all time favorite rides. If you know me, I love anything spooky, anything Halloween. Um, so even though this is a no height requirement line, uh, ride rather, and you can bring your babies babies probably won't even realize it but you know just be mindful because if I know I know when I was a kid my mom brought me here when I was four years old and if she brought me on the haunted mansion at four I probably would wouldn't speak to her <laughs> welcome foolish mortals to the haunted mansion and consider this dismaying observation. This chamber has no windows and no doors. <laughs> Which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out. <laughs> There's always 
my way. Made it over to Epcot for the next batch of rides. And what's so funny is that people always say Epcot is an adult park. Don't bring your kids to Epcot. Well, there are six rides here that have no height requirement. And there's not that many rides here altogether. So that's a really good chunk of rides that your littles can do and that kids can enjoy with you. So I think this is gonna be like a very eye-opening part of this video for a lot of people considering coming to Disney and if they should go to Epcot or not with their kids. We're going to start off with Spaceship Earth aka the ride that is in the big Epcot ball. Spaceship Earth is a slow moving dark ride and it goes through scenes starting from when cavemen were here to now of communication. It's narrated by Dame Judi Dench and then at the very end, you get to create your own future. Made it over to the Seas Pavilion for the Seas with Nemo and Friends. This is a really cute, slow moving, omni mover, dark ride, and it kind of takes you through the story of finding Nemo. Um, it's like a little abridged, I guess is the right word. Thank you. And it's really cute, and it actually features the song in the Big Blue World, which is part of the Finding Nemo musical at Disney's Animal Kingdom, which is so good with these out of this world like puppetry. Uh, a lot of people like, don't like it and I don't understand why. I think it's a, an amazing show and it's a brand new, like this is the only place you'll see it. It's written for Disney the Animal Kingdom. Um, but enough about that. We're gonna go and ride this ride. And it's really cool because it's actually projected onto the seas that's in this pavilion where you can see all the animals. Now it's time to head into the land pavilion, but unfortunately it's not for Soren. But there is another great ride here that a lot of people for some reason still don't know about and it's super underrated and I can't wait to show it to you. It is living with the land and now this is such like an underrated attraction. It's a slow moving boat ride and it takes you through basically Disney, not plants, but like the way they're growing their food, like basically the food they're growing here, you're eating. <laughs> you are eating either here at Sunshine Seasons Garden Grill, um, you know, somewhere else I'm not really sure about, but it's so cool and it's relaxing and it's very interesting. made my way over to the Imagination Pavilion because we're gonna ride Journey into Imagination with Figment. Now, here's the thing with this ride. The original ride, this is the third version of it, is so beloved. Um, I never wrote it that way, I've only written it this way. And they changed it to something else and people basically rioted. <laughs> they basically were like, no, no, no. And so then they changed it to this, which is supposed to be less awful. Um, I think it's still a very cute ride. I think kids will really enjoy it. I think people are just 
like a little, you know, upset that the version that they loved was taken away. But I don't know. Um, I I I love Eric Idle is the host of this ride uh, from Monty Python, and he, thank you, and he has no recollection of filming this. He also has no recollection of filming the movie Casper either. So who knows? But I think it's cute. Kids will definitely enjoy it, and you know, it's not as bad as everybody else, uh, makes it to be. head into the Grand Fiesta Tour featuring the three Caballeros and it's a very cute attraction. It's not my personal favorite but it is very cute. Our last attraction at Epcot is Frozen Ever After. This is one of the most popular rides in all of Walt Disney World. It's actually a really great attraction and I think people who don't even like Frozen will like this ride because the animatronics are so cool. They have the projected faces on them and they are very lifelike almost. It is definitely such a fun ride. I actually, it's, I'm not the biggest Frozen fan and I, love going on Frozen Ever After. There's a reason why the line is always super long. So let's get on the line. Let's go see Elsa and Anna, the true hero. Anna is the true hero of Frozen. Tell me I'm wrong and you're, yo, don't, don't tell me I'm wrong. Just leave, let's leave it at that. Anna is the true hero of Frozen, the end. <laughs> Our next attraction can be found in the France Pavilion. It is Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. This ride comes directly from Disneyland Paris. It is a 4D trackless ride and you are shrunken down to the size of a rat and you are scurrying through the bustling kitchen and dining room of Gusteau's, helping Remy get dinner ready and trying to avoid the evil Skinner. It's amazing technology. It's a super fun ride for the entire family. Everyone is just probably going to absolutely love it. Made it to Disney's Animal Kingdom for our next three no height requirement rides. Starting out in the beautiful, beautiful Pandora, it is Navi River Journey. Navi River Journey is a slow moving boat ride through the land of Avatar. I apologize, I'm not entirely sure of the Avatar lingo. I don't really like the movie, um, but it's a really beautiful boat ride with this amazing animatronic of the Shaman of Song. And actually right here, this is a, um, a, a woven piece of art of the Shaman of Song. And it's so beautiful. The animatronic is so lifelike. Like I, every time I see it, it absolutely freaks me out of how real it feels and looks. Um, I will say this line gets pretty long and I personally as much as it's a nice ride and the animatronic is cool I would not wait more than 25 to 30 minutes for this particular ride Made it to Africa for our next ride. It is Kilimanjaro Safaris, the flagship attraction here at Animal Kingdom. You get on this really cool safari truck and you go through this awesome safari where you see 
all amazing types of animals like giraffes and elephants and okapi. And it's always different because they're real animals. It's not like the Jungle Cruise where it's animatronic. It is so cool and um, it's a must do when you come to Animal Kingdom. Headed into Dino Land USA for our final attraction, moving vehicle, any height attraction in Animal Kingdom. It's Triceratops Spin. Yes, another Dumbo style attraction. But I actually really like this one um, because this land plays like modern day music. I really love it during Christmas time at night with all the beautiful Christmas lights and they play like modern pop Christmas music. It is so, so nice, but it is just a regular Dumbo style attraction. made it to Toy Story Land for our first ride in Hollywood Studios and it is Toy Story Midway Mania. I absolutely adore this attraction. It's not just a ride, it's a game and it's I think I think adults really like it more than the kids, I swear, because the adults get super competitive with each other. And you get to shoot um, different type of carnival, midway games, and it's so fun. And the queue is absolutely beautiful. So let's go inside and check it out. The next attraction and the final attraction of this list is Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. It is the newest attraction here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. And it is Mickey's first ride, not counting PhilharMagic, because it's not really a ride. And it's a family attraction. It's a trackless ride. It's so cute. I absolutely adore it. And I think your entire family will just love love it because I don't know I don't know one person that does not like this ride Well, my dudes, those were all the rides around Walt Disney World that do not have a height requirement. Let me know in the comments if you were surprised about some of the rides that actually were on this list. Let me know if you think it's worth it to bring your little littles to Walt Disney World, or if you think maybe wait till they're older and they can do some other attractions besides for the ones that were on this list. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit your bell notifications so you don't miss anything that comes on this channel. And follow me on Instagram at Magical Hijinx. Until next time, my dudes, I hope you guys get into some hijinks very, very soon. Have a blast.